Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to start a new subject that is VLSA. So VLSA stands for Very Large Scale Integration. VLSI stands for Very Large Scale Integration. Okay. So this subject for 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 B Tech students either uh, in three one or in three two that depends upon the university. So VLS stands for very large scale integration. What you are going to study in this and what are the different uh, advantages of studying this subject? So VLS is nothing but how we are going to fabricate an integrated circuit. Okay, suppose if you are seeing any smart watches or any smartphone. Any type of electronic gadgets that is in having some integrated circuit in it. Okay, all devices like TVs nowadays, wall hanging TVs are coming, LED TVs or LCD TVs. All such devices are made up of some integrated circuit. One chip is there to operate multiple functions. That chip is nothing but an integrated circuit. That IC integrated circuit can perform multiple operations. Can perform multiple applications and as well as operations. Okay, so how a single chip can perform multiple operations means inside we are having billions of transistors that are being fabricated of an integrated circuit. So that each and every circuit, like lot of transistors are being fabricated inside, and a lot of circuits are there so that it will perform multiple operations. Okay. So, what do you mean by very large scale integration? So, before going into this subject, let us see the meaning of this complete heading, and as well as I will also explain VLSA design flow in this video. So, very large scale integration. Integration we know integration is nothing but grouping together. Integration is nothing but grouping together, adding up. So, very large scale, very large scale. Actually, there are different types of IC evaluation technologies like small scale integration, medium scale integration, large scale integration, very large scale integration, joint scale integration, okay, ultra large scale integration, and then joint scale integration. Here, the evaluation of these integrated circuits are determining the number of transistors that are going to be fabricated on an integrated silicon semiconducting surface. Okay, we are taking it as a substrate. Okay, in very large scale integration, there are millions of transistors that we can fabricate on a silicon substrate. Millions of transistors, thousands, lakhs of transistors to millions of transistors. Okay, so when we are going for the fabrication of such millions of transistors, which technology is suitable? There are different families are available like a TTL family, DTL family, RTL family and CMOS logic families are available. Among all these, which technology is best suited for the integration of this VLSA or integrated circuits? The technology is best applicable for the fabrication is MOS technology, CMOS technology. We can call it as MOS technology. So CMOS stands for complementary metal oxide semiconductor. Complementary metal oxide semiconductor. I will write here. CMOS stands for complementary metal oxide semiconductor. Complementary metal oxide semiconductor. So here we are using this MOS technology for the fabrication of integrated circuits. That means inside which we are having multiple number of transistors and an AC. So all these transistors are made up of MOS technology. What is the advantage of MOS technology? MOS technology advantages are high packing density, high packing density. And another important point is very low power consumption, very low power consumption okay so you can give an example multiple examples like you take your smartwatch 
how many days that you can have the smartwatch without any charging suppose one time if you charge the smartwatch up to seven days you can use that without any charging that means the charge one time charge lasts for seven days and similarly suppose if you take your led or lcd tv that also works on very low power like 12 volts okay that depends on the integrated circuit technology what we are using for suppose if you are taking a old tv like your crt tvs that cannot work on these low powers it completely takes a 260 or 250 volts that we are 230 volts what we are having at the home electricity okay so such a such advantages are there with the integrated circuit technology that is made up of cmos technology okay so before going into the subject let us see what is the vlsa design flow vlsa design flow see here this is the vlsa design flow that means this design flow specifies the step by step approach how an idea comes and what is the market specification the design specification till the fabrication okay so vlsa design flow specifies the process of evaluation of uh, specification to the fabrication so vlsa design flow vlsi design flow specifies process from a design or we can say market requirement till the outcome will the outcome through fabrication through fabrication okay so what a vlsa design uh, flow will specify is it specifies what is the required current trend how the how the current trend is going on based on that the corresponding action will be taken and uh, the corresponding design is architectured and that is going to be implemented a simulation and as well as once the simulation results are okay then we go for the fabrication see here the first one is the design specification what a design specification says to the design engineer so design specification according to the market requirements design specification is going to be considered so suppose previously only uh, feature mobiles have been used feature mobiles using those mobiles we can have only calling function okay so only one to one calling function is there later sms has been implemented later mms has been implemented so later video games have been implemented so like that one by one one by one step by step step by step the phone has been turned into a very smart phone and now it is uh, very useful for all the applications okay even lot of applications we are running on the mobile itself okay so based on the requirement of the market the design specification is going to be considered what is the current requirement of the market that design is considered and based on that an architecture is going to be constructed so first and foremost thing is the outer structure architecture architecture is nothing but an outer structure so design specification design specification considers the current or market requirement market requirement software design specification what we have architectural architecture design so in the architecture design what we will do an outer shape or expectation is created okay this is the input okay one something like this one box is given 
okay this is the input and if something is there here okay we should get output like this this is the architecture on outer circle outer view so once this outer view is designed later we go into the what is the internal block diagrams or gate level circuit that is needed so next one is a gate level design gate level design so in the gate level design what we will do we will design the entire circuit what we are expecting to get the output that in the form of gates like using the standard gates like and gates or gates not gates basic gates and as well as any other gates can be used so using and or not gates the circuit or logic circuit we can say it is a logic circuit logic circuit is going to be built logic circuit is going to be built this is the gate level design okay so design specification we have considered later architecture what is the outer uh, what are the inputs we should have what are the outputs we should have we have seen later we, if we go into the next level then we will be having a gate level design gate level design completely made up of gates itself once if we go again in depth into the gates we will be having circuit level design circuit level design is nothing but completely made up of transistors so in the circuit level design i will write here in the circuit level design circuit level design consists of consists of transistor transistor diagram circuit level design completely consists of transistorized diagrams that means what is the internal architecture in terms of transistors that we have going to create in this circuit level design so once the circuit level design is created and what is the expected output that we are going to see that is created in the form of hdl coding what do you mean by hdl coding hdl stands for hdl stands for hardware hardware description hardware description language hardware description language there are two types of hardware description languages that we have one is vhdl language another one is Verilog HDL, VHDL and Verilog HDL, Verilog Hardware Description Language. VHDL again abbreviated as very large scale integrated circuit. Ah, uh, sorry, very high speed integrated circuit. very high speed integrated circuit very high speed integrated circuit hardware description language so there are two types of hardware description languages available with us one is hardware very uh, vhsic nothing but a very high speed integrated circuit hardware description language and as well as verilog hdl so using any one of these two we will write a code to describe the behavior of the circuit what we have drawn in the circuit level design okay so here we will write a code that is nothing but hdl code we are describing the behavior of the circuit using a code so once the code is completed next task is to simulate next task is to simulate simulation is nothing but giving the inputs and uh, running the output so simulation is the process of verifying 
the code with inputs so we are applying some input suppose if you are going to design an and gate that and gate whether we are giving 0 0 output should be 0 0 1 output should be 0 1 0 output should be 0 if you are giving 1 1 then output should be 1 so that kind type of simulation we need to run another one is verification verification is nothing but once the complete structure is ready and meeting the requirements then we can uh, say that okay completely the circuit meets the original requirements then we go for the fabrication okay so once the circuit is ready and next verification is completed then we completely go for the fabrication which is going to be the outcome or product of the design what the market is looking for okay so fabrication and then it is coming out as a product suppose after verification if it does not meet the original requirement as we are thinking about then again going back to the hdl coding again we are doing some changes in the code to get the original required output this loop is continuously repeated until we get the required or specified output okay so this is what the design flow of a vlsi architecture vlsi circuits okay in the next video i will discuss about the uh, evaluations of integrated circuit and as well as the Moore's law. Thank you.